Hey, Jerry Wise. Hey, I think we started. Yes, we did. Hey, Colt. Hello. I want to uh, thank everybody for joining us today. My name is Jerry Wise, and I'm a life and relationship coach, and I've been working with people for over 40 years to try to help them in their own recovery and their own uh, uh, life direction using the deep well of uh, Bowen Family Systems Theory. And so many of you have watched my videos and have been happy with what I've shared in those videos. And the, um, uh, the videos talk about my perspective of um, uh, how I see problems, how I formulate problems and using a family system model to do that. And then I wanted to, Hey, how about we do some, uh, uh, you know, Fridays with fans and talk about people who have, uh, I hate, think, been helped or benefited by that. And today I've got with me, uh, who is very willing to join me, uh, Colt Gordon, who is uh, someone that is now uh, a friend and has been a client. And uh, we're even working on maybe having him become a part of our organization here. Uh, and we're going to talk, I'll talk about that at the end. And uh, I just really am impressed with Colt and his work and the things that he's done. And, and we have a kindred heart when it comes to self-differentiation and family systems things. And I just wanted to talk about his story, uh, about uh, how he has gotten connected with me, what he's learned. And I hope you'll, uh, I hope you all enjoy our talk today. Colt, it's a joy to have you join me. Today. Yes, right back at you with everything you just told me. I, I feel like we have that kindred spirit and it's a pleasure being here. Wonderful, wonderful. I, I've got a few questions, though we can talk about anything. I don't really care. Absolutely. Uh, we, even before we start our recording, we were talking about what do we want to talk about. We just want to make it an authentic discussion about ourselves, about life. And that's, I think that's a good thing to do. Yes, let's differentiate in this conversation. Let's, let's differentiate. <laughs> That's right. Uh, the first question is, uh, how did you get introduced to my work? And, and, to, and I suppose, I, you know, I stand on the shoulders of others. I mean, right. to my work as I presented it in terms of Bowen Family Systems Theory and such. How, how did you get connected with me? Now, don't be modest. You're a star on YouTube. So, mm. So first things first, I was born in the 80s and to an alcoholic family. <laughs> so that's, that started the path of finding you, I would say. And interesting, like we were saying before we recorded, was that I think I was self-differentiating a lot. I, I knew something at a, at a young age that something was wrong and kind of just mm -hmm. going with the flow wasn't going to work for me in life, <clears throat> which at times turned into a cutoff, emotional cutoff, kind of pushing everyone away. And... So I got to a point where I was, especially looking back, I was differentiating from my family. That felt good. I just didn't know I could do that all the time consistently. Right. Right. So, oh, I have accidentally self-differentiated before. Yes. Yeah. Right. And it felt really great. I just didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. I didn't know it could be the plan moving forward. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yes. So interesting to be very specific. I, first of all, I turned my life around in 2013. I mean, I was homeless. I was in a psychiatric hospital. I'm now a therapist, case manager, group facilitator. I never thought I would be doing that. That's number one. <laughs> wow. This, this field found me. So I did a lot of work to turn myself around and, and to, again, inconsistently self-differentiate, but get my life in order. However, one area of my life continued to be like a, a thorn in my side, if you will. And that was definitely romance. I kept finding myself in situations that I settling, not using my voice, not allowing myself to be heard, not letting myself to be dealt with, doing a lot of self disrespecting behaviors and wondering why I'm so unhappy. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I, I specifically reached out to you after I had another breakup, another one. 
And it's so interesting because my whole family introduced me, my family in Wyoming introduced me to this lovely gal. Like you would be perfect for each other. It's amazing. And oh my gosh, we were, if we're talking enmeshment. If we're talking enmeshment, we were great. For we were great. Oh, we uh, like a glove, right? As Jim Carrey like would glove. say. And that was precisely the problem. There was, it was like a perfect fit with our, I think you call it one of your videos, the emotional field, right? That, mm -hmm. that context of both our emotional fields work together. And ultimately why it didn't work was because I was more differentiated. I'd done some more work. I was a little older. And so there was that ultimately, I was like, I can't do this. I was feeling, I almost felt like I was dying. It was almost like my bottom line is in this relationship. I can't do these relationships anymore. Different face, same situation. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and I think now I can use the phrase, we marry our emotional field. Yeah. I love that. And that fits. Right. And, and I think it's important to say too, that you can, you can have differentiation. Tell me what you think about this. You can have differentiation being practiced, if you will, consciously or unconsciously in like your career and school. And then in one area, it's really not differentiated. Does that make sense? Or is that, is that? Well, and Bowen would call that our pseudo self. Mm. That many of us have a pseudo self, which, you know, we, hey, I'm, and I've had people all the time tell me, you know, I am so different at work. I'm so different with my yeah. friends. <laughs> I'm so different, but with my husband and with my wife, I'm, or with my family of origin, I'm just such a mess. Right. Well, you're able to do, you have a better pseudo self going with those areas, but your real basic sense of self is still not, it's still low in terms of self-differentiation. Yes. I absolutely. can, many people can act self-differentiated, but that's not the same thing as being really different and at the real self because it comes when we have that intimacy, that's when we really test the waters. When right. it's intimate, when it's family of origin, when it, that's when we see how differentiated are we. Right, and I have an example of that too. I, I think that, that makes total sense to me because even though like on the pseudo self kind of, I suppose the projection I was being in other areas of my life, I was getting my life together, but I, it, but I still was, coming from this emotional field ultimately right and right. there was this intimacy and lack of intimacy and in, in this hollowness and so i found you because of another breakup dang it <laughs> and uh let's see I, I wrote some notes on some things i wanted to say here i think oh i wrote down the video the very first video i found of yours was <laughs> dysfunctional families eat their own <laughs> and you opened up you opened up the video harsh title but re there's reality here, something like this. And it caught my attention and I was, you know, we, we have broken up and, and I'm so, I'm happy the, the breakup happened and I'm so just like, I felt like a bottom, like I can't do this anymore. And it was so strange being in this relationship because I, I think one of the last things I told her was, and the reason why it didn't work is because I said, I feel like I'm in a relationship with you, your dad and me. There's like a triangle here. And I can you were, yeah, and I, this is not going to work for me. And it was so painful to see someone I <laughs> enmeshment I cared about. Right. <laughs> and they would have like this glazed over look in their eyes when the, when the cult C U L T the cult like family, the cannibalized self would just take over. And it's like, who is this person? And also right. who am I being by putting up with this? And, and that was, it was, it was so, it was painful and it was. And, and I'm applying to join the cult. Right. Yes. yes you know, yes, and I'm going, yes. why am I applying to join this? And, and right. we're not denigrating her family or denigrating no. her. It's I've been in that girl's situation. I mean, right. I was yeah. her. So, yeah. You know. And something I, I've noticed too, is that in, I'm not trying to be too hard on myself here, but there's a truth to it is that how honest am I really being if, if, if I am paying attention in the moments on those first dates, for instance, 
how honest am I being if I'm letting that stuff go? So who, no wonder this keeps happening. I'm not differentiating at all times, only when I really get tired of it. <laughs> only when, yeah, that's when people pretend to be self-differentiated when they're tired of it. Right. And oh, right. well, I'm going to leave this relationship. Yeah, but you've been unself, undifferentiated yes. from the beginning. Yes, yes. And, and, and you're right. We'll let things go because the enmeshment is at work, you know, because yes. the fusions work. So we go, oh, well, <laughs> oh, well, well, I don't agree with that, but uh, well, I love her. Right, so. right. And, and we'll get worked out or, you know, I can, I can live with that or, or we're just not even aware of it at all. Right. And I don't, no, why perhaps I, I, I suppose I do know why I, I just can't do it anymore. I cannot. And that's when I found you, I just cannot do that relationship anymore. It's, and that's really that relationship with myself anymore. I can't do that relationship with myself anymore where I'm lying to myself in interactions and then wondering why I'm so empty. And I just, that's why I contacted you. And, and that's hitting bottom. That's right. someone who goes, Hey, I, this has got to stop. Mm -hmm. I just worked with another man today who had hit bottom and he said, I, I can't do this anymore. I, I, right. I, I've got to look at me because right. it's, I'm just going to keep doing it. Life is just going to pass me by here. Right. right. And, and I'll keep getting hurt and doing the same cycle and pattern over and over again. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I like about Bowen family systems theory is that we really do try to get at making a real change not just a secular, cyclical change or a, a superficial change. I mean, we want to really be us. And that takes work and, and real reflection. As, and as I said in the recent video, it takes self-awareness, self-definition, and self-regulation. You know, well, those aren't always easy things to do. Who wants to do that? I mean, I just like to fly by the seat of my pants. I don't want to have to do any kind of work like that. Right. But if you come from a dysfunctional, <coughs> excuse me, dysfunctional family, you can avoid it if you want. I mean, right. but it's just at our own peril. Right. You know, and, and that's why I never have to beg someone to be a client of mine. <laughs> I just say, continue doing what you're doing. Yeah. You know, that's, and and I hope it works for you or I hope you find something, mm -hmm. but eventually you may come back mm -hmm. and go, you know, Jerry, I really need to do this work. Right. What do you think has been the most beneficial for you? Well, I think it's really the important what you said. Yeah. I think it's really important what you said about that pseudo self, because when real change happens, it starts echoing. Like I, I, you can fool yourself. Well, I'm doing so well at work, you know, and mm -hmm. I think it really has started echoing. Uh, when I first got this new job, I switched jobs. I, I work at a, uh, working with people getting sober, getting off drugs and, and, and other diagnoses. And it's been really interesting because my first two weeks, a, a gentleman I worked with, another case manager, was talking to, you know, he just, he wanted to talk smack about the big boss, this, that, and the other. And I was kind of nodding my head, uh-huh, uh-huh. And I found myself going home feeling kind of resentful. And the next day I said, I know what I need to do to self differentiate and let this person deal with me. And I went there and I said, Hey, this is not going to work for me. And I was nervous. I was, I, I had all those emotions that came up and I still did it because I was logically looking at what I needed for this work situation to work. And that's huge. So being able for it to translate in all areas, and mm -hmm. yeah, having that self-respect is so important, that self-dignity, I would say, because if I'm constantly, you know, only self-differentiate when it's safe, <laughs> when it's comfortable. Or when it's easy. Right, when it's easy. When it's easy. Yeah, and, and, and it's interesting because I work with clients doing acceptance and commitment therapy and essentially what it is is feel the fear and do it anyway and i i i have to practice what i preach and so in every area here's another opportunity to self-differentiate stand on my own two feet 
let people deal with me. So it's absolutely benefited in it being applied and it's echoing in all areas because I'm really feel like I'm getting at the root versus superficially going to therapy for years. And, and I've brought up these things with romance. I brought up these things of, of not letting people deal with me. It's like, Oh, well, you're a great guy. You know, they'll do, you'll get there. <laughs> you'll get there. You're a great guy. I'm sure it'll work out, work itself out. And, or even you're handsome, so you should be fine with. It. Well, I'm not though. <laughs> you should be fine with women if you're handsome. Then yeah, yeah. That should you're be all you though, need. So, <laughs> so it's, but it's, how come it's, I can't make it work? It's been very frustrating. Or just here, just don't date anyone for for a year and a half, and then it'll work itself out. That didn't work either because it still wasn't doing the work. I was not differentiating. Right. I was just cutting off from everything. So it wasn't actually, it's benefited me because I'm look, I'm working at the root. I'm not, and, and it's so interesting. It's, it's, it's just being translated. I, I, I had my Jeep. I, I got a Jeep in 2015. Here's an example of me differentiating. I never bought myself the car I wanted. I never got the thing I wanted. And I've always wanted a, a soft top two door stick shift Jeep. I've never regretted that decision allow myself to, to, to play, to have something I want. And I, I met you and, and when I met you, my, my Jeep has well, got totaled by an alcoholic. Someone hit me, a drunk driver. And oh. I just, I decided not to get the Jeep again. And I got like a, let's just call it a Kia Rio, Rio. <laughs> just a nice, right. I was so upset with that decision. And I decided that wasn't the self respecting, the self dignified, the coming to self decision. I went back and got the Jeep and I'm so glad I did. So <laughs> that sounds, that doesn't sound like it may be, it's huge. I think it's, it's not trivial. Cause it's not trivial for you. Right. Cause it, it, it connects with your emotional issues. Of right. course, a Jeep or no sheep is no big deal. Uh -huh. I mean, people can drive anything, a, a clunker, you know, and it's still, mm -hmm. But for you, it was the underlying dynamics of it. It's not just the car. Right. It's, and many people say, oh, well, you just should, you know, well, why didn't you just get the Jeep? Well, because I don't, didn't have permission <laughs> to get the Jeep. I, I have self-love and self-care issues. Right. That's, it's not the Jeep. It's not what Chrysler makes or what, that, that's not the issue. Right, and I'm sure we've talked about my cars too, and the exotic cars that I yes. might rent, and and has been a part of my because the very first time I got what I wanted, it was so powerful. Mm -hmm. I hey, I'm not taking any cars with me when I'm gone. I mean, they're, <laughs> they're not going. They're not coming with me. And I know that. So right, they're they're not that important. But the importance was that I mattered. That's right. what was important. That I mattered. Yeah. And when you grow up in an alcoholic home, like I did, you're not allowed to have a voice. You're not allowed to have emotions. And so it's not true. Like, why don't you just tell your new work associate to just stop talking about that? Yeah. Thank you for sharing. I mean, that's, yeah, I know. I right. didn't do that. I, I know years. what I'm supposed to, I, I know what's right, right. Or I know what I should do, but I don't do it. And for me, Can you help me with that. <laughs> yeah. And for me, I needed a, a fellow journeyer on the path, you to, yeah, it, you use your voice, stand on your own two feet, let, let him deal with you. And what's so interesting, that guy that I work with now that was talking all that mess about the boss, the big boss, we're pretty close. Right. He really respects me. And I really, he's like, man, I, I know what I'm dealing with with Colt. <laughs> right. I know yeah. what I'm dealing with, with Colt, yeah. with Colt. And that, I think that's what I found people also going, Oh, Jerry's not just this charming, nice guy who's codependent <laughs> and who would, you know, now I'm dealing with the real Jerry mm. and I can trust him more. I can, you know, I value him more. I, I you know, it wow. just, it was a transforming rather because there's a price of nice. There's mm -hmm. a price of codependency. Mm. Uh, how many codependents do you know that you wouldn't trust? Right. Even though they're over functioning. Right. You know, and I know they do anything with me, but I know they're not a solid self. Mm -hmm. They're just, you know, 
be nice because that's their frame of reference and, right. and overly nice. And yeah. then you don't know, are they telling you the truth or are they telling you their codependent lie? Yeah. You know, which is, oh, <laughs> yes, Jerry, I agree with you on, I don't know if they agree with me or not because right. they don't have a right to disagree right. in their own head. Mm -hmm. So how do I know if they agree or don't agree with me? Right. It's just that codependency, which I was also, and which I did. Yes, and, and going back to the romantic side of this is what's so interesting for me is that my default self, right, my mesh self, if you will, is is wanting someone with no boundaries, wanting someone with no voice. That, that's mm -hmm. like my comfort zone, mm -hmm. and it's so interesting. I, I, I notice this again, and again, it's me choosing in the moment. I, I, I went on a... a, a I don't know if it was a date or what, but we were kind of just talking and it never left that first date. I, I never saw her again. The whole time she was, she demonstrated that she had no boundaries with her family. Um, it was constantly right. talk, it, never asked me any questions. And I would have excused that. I would have excused that. Right. You, and you would I, have let that go. Yeah. And I, and I saw what I needed. Thank you. Uh, good luck with everything. Take care. And that's so new. <laughs> that, that's so different. That's so different. And it feels so good because I'm, cha I'm the one in charge of what's acceptable, not acceptable versus, yeah, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been, yeah. it's just echoing in all areas. And, it, and it's, a, it's a choice. It's not this automatic, um, oh, I saw Jerry Wise and, and now I'm healed. It's, I don't, why would I want to go back to not consistently doing this? And some days I don't get it totally right, but I'm watching it constantly. We don't. Right, yeah. right. But, and you have a way to watch it. Mm -hmm. You have a way to see it. Right. And, and you're right. I, people come to me and it's not like I just wave a magic wand and they're <laughs> healed and all well. I want to help them get on the right path. Right. So they will take that path and it's not the jerry path it's the colt path right you know <laughs> but i'd like him to do it with the right map yes you know here's the <laughs> map of how it works now colt go do you don't do me i can only do me and i don't always do that perfectly so remember you know, i'm we, not even go ahead remember when we met at the queen mary Oh, the Hotel Queen Mary. Yes, out in LA. Yeah. Yes. We, we had a session there. That's cool. Well, we you, uh, I decided to self-differentiate from you in that moment. And I was, I was really nervous because I'm not supposed to do that. You know? And I said, you know, Jerry, I don't, I don't know if this whole wait a year to date thing is for me. <laughs> you did. <laughs> yeah, that's you, right. You said, oh, okay. You don't have, it, you're very, and I, I was surprised. You, you call, you, this is the work. You need, to, you need to stay single for a right. whole year. And this is what's right. And this is what yeah. you should be doing. And you even said something in a later session where you said, you know, you can self-differentiate into a bad decision. And I thought and that was really interesting. <laughs> you can self-differentiate into a bad decision and, and you have a right to do that. Yeah. Otherwise, my life would be a mess. I self-differentiate into wrong decisions and then I have to grow and I have to mm -hmm. learn. And right. that's how we grow up. Yeah. And so, so you can say, I'm not going to do the year wait. And well, who am I to, you know, and that's a good thumbnail. It's not good for everybody. And then of course, as we've been talking, Cole, as you've been making the point that the year not dating for a year is not magic. Mm -hmm. It's what are you going to do with that year? It's not just, okay, we'll just wait a year and <laughs> then things will be, you'll, you will have done the prescription and done the steps and then you'll, you know, and I, so when I hear other people uh, talk about giving that advice, I go, well, are you telling them that as the solution and advice or are you telling them that's a tool they can use to right. do good work for themselves, mm -hmm. not just spend the year not dating. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's I mean, like, well, you'll, and then you'll find yourself, Jerry. Well, then you'll, you may find, and you may not. Yeah. And, and finding yourself is 
an in moment decision. I, I mean, that's, that's what I'm learning here is I'm, I'm selfing or I'm not, <laughs> and I can self in bad that, decisions. <laughs> and I can self in bad decisions and, and I can and, self and, in good decisions. And exactly. And, 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 and I'm responsible for my decisions. Right. Yes. And I've claimed the right many times to people that I have a right to be wrong. Mm -hmm. I just want you to know I have a right to be wrong. Right. And because I'm an adult, I right. can, Hey, I can go out there and speed my car on the highway as fast as I want. Mm -hmm. Now a policeman may intervene, right. but I have a right to do it. Right. <laughs> now I may have to pay a healthy fee for that. And I may have but don't tell me I can't go do that. Right. I, can, I can do that. Now, I may need to learn that's not such a great thing to do, and it could be costly. <laughs> you know, but I'm going to either I'm going to learn the lesson or I'm not. Mm -hmm. But you keep hitting me over the head with don't speed, don't speed, don't speed. Right. It, no, you should say you have a right to make that decision. Yes. Now, let's see how it goes. Yeah. Let's do the experiments and, and, you know, that's, you got to find your way. Right. And so it's not, I have these magical advice that somehow <laughs> just makes it, you know, cause there are lots of things I've seen work sideways, work coming in the back door, work mm -hmm. in secondary ways. And work. so I'm open to all, because it depends on how you see it, where you're going and what are the dynamics happening. Mm -hmm. It's not just the content. It's right. the process that you're in. Right. Uh, and, and see, don't date for a year is content. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Don't date for a year to do this is process. Yes. You know, it, it, it's just content and content can be helpful or not helpful. Right. I know people who have not dated for a year and then got right back into a bad yeah. relationship. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's like, because it's not that magical year. It's right. what are you going to do? And are you going to do it every day? Like we're talking about self differentiate Right. You know, are you going to do that self-present work every day? Mm -hmm. And uh, that, and in fact, if somebody's really done that and been doing that really well, then why wait a year? Yeah. <laughs> well, what's the year going to do? If, if you're already on the right track and you're, you know, what? Well, isn't that an artificial weight? Right. And again, I'm not against that rule of thumb. Right. You know, it's not a bad rule of thumb, but let's look at the whole picture. Not That's get enmeshed the, with the rule of thumb. <laughs> and not get enmeshed with the rules, techniques, uh -huh. tricks. You know, we, we and it's right. And just, just like when, and I am such a fan of the 12-step program. Mm -hmm. Me too. But you know, I'm not enmeshed with it. Right. I know people have recovered without it. Mm -hmm. Now, what do I do with that? Does that mean I don't believe in it? No, I think it's, it's, it's absolutely critical and helpful for Jerry, many people. It's the last house on the block. It's, it's, <laughs> and I think, and, and I'm not God, so I don't manage how everything works. And I have right. people who have done well uh, doing all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't, and, but I also have my own bent and my own beliefs and, and right. I like 12 step programs. I think if you're an alcoholic and you're my heavens, it can be very, very helpful. I've also right. known people who have not, who stopped drank, stopped drinking, did their own recovery work and were not dry drones. Right. And so what do I do with that? You know, what do right. I do? Does that mean I give up all 12 step no. work or beliefs? <laughs> No, right. it doesn't mean that either. It means this universe yeah. is complicated. There's gray. You know, nuanced. there's gray. There's and it's very sophisticated. It's very nuanced, and we got to keep that in mind, for right. sure. And you know, another thing that go ahead. No, no, I was just going to ask a final question here, but go ahead. Beneficial in my work with clients. It's it's been so interesting because self-differentiation has given me so much courage working with clients and and something you've said that's really stuck with me is that's just how i see it i'm noticing this in session with you <laughs> i'm noticing this and that's just how i see it. i don't know if i'm right i'm giving you my best guess and, and how i see it yeah and doing it in group therapy group therapy has been 
I have a client like, what are you doing in therapy, group therapy? This is really helping me. And I'm like, I'm just saying how I see it. And I'm encouraging you all wow. to do the same so we can all differentiate in the room together. And, and that creates this here and wow. now as Yalom talks about. And it's like, right. whoa, this is versus psychoeducation. Here's the packet. <laughs> right. And, Here's the packet. Let's just talk about these points. Right. And so working individually, just it's like I was telling you earlier, it seems so simple, but it, it's so profound for clients who've never heard of self-differentiation. And, and for me to walk, walk through with them and be that fellow journey on the path has been so powerful. And then having a fellow clinicians like, what are you doing exactly? Well, tell me more about this thing. And then they kind of get a glazed over look and I don't know what to do with that, but that's another story. But um, it's just, it's, it's so interesting how simple and, and profound and how rare it is to find fellow clinicians and how rare, how interesting, how surprised clients are that have been with their, been in therapy since they're 11 years old. And this is the first time they're really feeling a connection because I'm self differentiating and, and they're learning that too. And they're connecting like, wow, I like you. I like working with you. And, and I can do this outside too. Like, yeah, <laughs> this is, this is dress rehearsal for the real thing. Let's keep practicing with me this and go out there and do it. Rehearsal. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And you can keep doing it. And you yeah. can, and I hope self different. And I do believe calmness, non reactivity, and self differentiation is contagious. Yes. And you've just talked about its contagion. Oh, yes. Just as reactivity is contagious, anxiety mm -hmm. is contagious, systems anxiety. Right. Well, so also can be self differentiation. And people go, what, what is this new feeling I'm having? <laughs> by being with you, you know, I'm, right. it's just a self-differentiation uh, uh, contagion. We're, we're being a, people together. Versus, we're being people together. Yeah. And, we're and being another, thing too, another thing, you know, working in, in sobriety, you, you have all these clinicians I work with, like trying to herd cats. And I'm like, the cats are going to do what they do. Let, let the it, cats let, are... You can't herd cats. And, and they're like, why, why are you so calm about this, Colt? Like, I can't control the clients. They're going to do what they do. And they're so uncalm because they're trying to herd the cats. Right. And having trained many therapists, uh -huh. I know that their first work is how are they going to control all the cats? Mm -hmm. And I help them to disabuse them of that belief. Yes. So they can go, you're not going to. Now, let me tell you how to herd cats. Be yourself. Amen. <laughs> then you're going to have more control than you realize. By not being yourself and trying to herd all of them, you're going to lose control. Right. Absolutely. And, and then as you've talked to your coworkers, they get all anxious. And, and I'm like, how am I going to, oh, what am I going to do with them? And it's like, why are you doing all this with them? You know, and, and people will always ask me, uh, how do I deal with my sister? You know, how do I handle them? And I go, mm -hmm. stop dealing and stop handling. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's where you start. Yes. You're, you're stop dealing with them. And I don't mean cut off from them, but I mean, stop dealing with them. Yeah. Deal with you. Stop, um, uh, stop handling them handle you right and they go right. oh well that makes more sense i might be able to calm down and kind of yeah we might be able to calm down and have some, some control over something we can control which is me yes <laughs> and now and, i'm calmer when i get up against the cats right and calmness is everything as you say and and, and in the video calmness is everything and, and clients are, they, they've said these California phrases that I like the vibe you got, the aura or whatever. And I'm like, oh, that's good to hear. And I'm, I'm simply being self differentiating and, and, and letting all the noise be its noise. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Okay. Anyway, right. here we are. All right. So would you recommend others to do self differentiation work or family systems work? Well, so rather uh, uh, a softball there, I suppose, from everything we've been saying. Yes. I don't know what else there is to do that's <laughs> going to produce a fulfilling result. I suppose a measurement does work. It for, does. 
dysfunction. A time you know, and, and yeah, work, it, right? Right. And, and, and cutoff works too. I, what else is there to do to find that self-respect and self-dignity and to be respected and, and to actually like self, to find that playfulness, to get the Jeep, to live life and be in, I, I don't know why, why else you wouldn't want to. And especially during this very, are you on the blue team, red team? What football team are you on? <laughs> kind of atmosphere. Yep. Yep. I think it's more important than ever to be a self so we can have conversation versus absolutely you're with, either with us or which are against and, us. Right. Yeah. And it, that's, that's, it's scary. So I, I think it's important in so many facets of society. And, and, and I think the way it changes is each individual changes himself and, and, and comes to self, the big S self. Well, and, the big S self and the, you know, what I find is the fearfulness and that if somebody says, well, you know, are you on the blue team? Are you in the red team? You know, what, uh, and, and do you believe this? Do you believe that? And then if you say, you know, it's very important that we be a self that you believe nothing matters. You, you have <laughs> no values or no beliefs about anything. Right. And no. that's not what you're saying. No, you not know, at all. You're, you're not saying, oh, who cares about the teams? Nothing <laughs> really matters. No, no. You no. cannot be on the team and things really matter. Yes. You Absolutely. Know, that, you, it's just, but be careful about the team because it does have a group think and a group dynamic situation that could be enmeshing or non self differentiating. Yeah. Because if, if let's just talk about, um, I don't want to be, well, I don't know if I'll go into that example, but it's, if my values still matter to me, if I'm on no team, right? I, I don't need a team to right. have my values matter. Absolutely. And, that, and maybe you, that's the best. Yeah. And that's, that's nuanced. That's a self. That's not this. I, I, it feels so rare that people are thinking outside of the box. And to me that I've, I've always been this curious person. And, and, and I think that's so important that I don't abandon that just for the sake of comfort and, and that validation you can get from a group, like you can take it or leave it. And honestly, I hope you take it because I, I like people <laughs> I, and right. I really care about things being right. And, and for everyone to be served, I don't think you get served by, by this football team or that football team, if we're playing sports with all this. I think it's so important right. that it's served by – be the change you want to see in the world. Gandhi. Be, be, and, and I preach that all the time, that if yeah. you really want to change the world, there's one world you can start to change. Yeah. And I believe me, it can change other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. But so many people think that I need to go change the world. Hurting cats. Yeah, but you're going to herd cats and mm -hmm. you're going to get awfully frustrated and probably have a heart attack. Yeah. So, and then what good are you going to be at that point? Right. Absolutely. Um, is there any other comments you'd like to share or say, Colt, it's been such a joy to talk with you today. Yeah. I'll say it's not about how, but when, <laughs> <laughs> and that's just how I see it, Jerry. And that's <laughs> how clever. How clever yeah. of you. Have yes, you seen well, that somewhere? Yes, uh, copyright Jerry Wise. <laughs> that's for any of you who don't know, that's the name of my podcast show on Spotify and the streaming. It's called Not How But When. Um, and I and I use that with clients and you know, because many times they're always asking me how. And I will respond with, I'm not sure it's a how question. Mm -hmm. It's a when. And if you're not ready, okay. If you are ready, then it will happen. Yeah. And um, because we know a lot more than we realize. We need to be right. self-aware, self-defined, self-regulated. And, and most of us have the capability to do that. Some mm -hmm. people don't. If they're mentally ill or if they have some deficit, then they can't. Okay, that's okay. But most of us can do things along that line. Absolutely. And 
Um, and especially if we come out of denial, that's, mm -hmm. then we can really do that work. Right. Well, so, we need to go ahead. Oh, just following that heartbeat, right? This most of the time I've ran, run away from things that make me nervous. And I think I'm alive. Self-differentiation is an adventure now. It's something that, ooh, here's another opportunity to be courageous. And, and not to be a contrarian, though. There's a difference there. <laughs> but just That's right. following That's the right. heartbeat. Following the heartbeat and like, ooh, I don't want to do this, but it's important for this process. And so, yes. Yeah. And thank you, Jerry, so much for having me. It is such a joy to have you today. And in fact, we've been talking about uh, adding Colt to our um, – uh, our team here, and we're going to continue to talk about that. If you'd like to get a hold of Colt, uh, we'll have some, you know, information that you can do that. Yes. Um, I hope that you'll go to uh, viewers will go to my website, JerryWiseRelationshipSystems.com. You can join a paid plan there to get more uh, benefits and things. I also here on YouTube, if you'll just click and become a member, I think it's only a two dollars or something and you can see uh exclusive content on youtube and we're putting exclusive content and members on youtube in fact we may be shifting our plan over to the youtube membership um but you can go to my website you can leave a testimonial you can write to me you can look at videos all of my videos and podcasts are on my website or you can go to spotify and listen to podcasts I even have some of my own music on Spotify that I did years ago. So if you want to see another side of me from back when I had hair, uh, you can find that on Spotify as well. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think if I missed anything. I think I've covered it all. Uh, and I hope you'll um, click subscribe here to be a member, subscription member to the YouTube channel. Then every video that we bring out, you'll get it. And I'm so thankful for Fridays with fans and, and this Friday with Colt. And Colt, you are a good guy. And you are handsome. There, well, okay, we'll put that in there. This is episode two. Episode two. Friday with fans. And, <laughs> with fans. And uh, no, it's been a joy to know you. And it was great. I go out to California occasionally, uh, though it's been a little tough with things going on with the virus. But I'd like to come back out to California, and I do meet with clients when I come out to California. Yeah. And that, and we, he and I, got to meet out there, and that was enjoyable, and got to do some fun things. Yeah. Uh, with <laughs> with a car that I had out there. Yes. And um, I just want to thank you all for watching and and being patient with us as we just have a conversation about doing our own work because we're talking about our own work too yeah uh, and there's no work that i have clients do that i don't have to do yeah i mean there is what's good for the goose is good for the gander i mean it, there's nothing that i'm telling people that jerry doesn't have to do i wish mm -hmm. believe me i wish that was not the case hello journey is on I, the path and that's colt's belief and also yeah so thank you all. We'll let you go. Thanks for uh, watching us today. And I certainly hope you all have a great day. Thank, thank you, world. You, thank you, Jerry.